Hello everybody, this video is on Newtonian laws of motion. Newton's first law is also known as inertia, which states that a mass at rest or in motion with constant velocity will remain so unless it is acted upon by an external force. Now recall that an external force can either be a contact force or a non-contact force. You can learn more about forces in the introduction video to forces. So at first glance, this statement can be very confusing. So let's break this down. A mass at rest, which means it has no velocity. Newton's first law states that if this object is at rest, it will remain at rest and not move until it is acted upon by an external force. So either a push or pull, a weight force, etc. Similarly, a mass that is traveling at a constant velocity of speed, let's say five minutes per second, will continue to travel at this constant velocity until it is acted upon by an external force. So if there are no external forces acting on this ball, it will travel at five minutes per second forever. Now, of course, that is not realistic because normally when a ball is moving at a constant velocity, let's say again, five minutes per second along a surface, there'll be a frictional force that is acting on the ball. And this frictional force is an example of an external force that will prevent the ball from continuing to travel at this constant velocity. Let's look at a few more examples of inertia or Newton's first law. Let's say you have a car traveling towards the right at constant speed. And on the roof of this car, there's a box and there's no straps that is fixing the box onto the roof of the car, which means the box is also moving to the right at the same speed as the car. So if the car is traveling, let's say at 10 meters per second, so is the box, 10 meters per second. When this car suddenly breaks and comes to a stop, the box that was originally sitting on the roof of the car will continue to travel at 10 minutes per second because it is not acted upon by any external forces. In simpler words, there are no forces stopping the motion of this box, which is the reason why what you'll see is that the box is flung forward when the car comes to a sudden stop. This is a very common example of inertia in action. A simple experiment you can also do at home to demonstrate the concept of inertia is by placing a coin onto a piece of cardboard or paper on top of a glass of water. When the coin is resting on this piece of paper, it has no motion because its weight force, which is mg, is precisely balanced by the normal force, which acts upwards. So in that vertical direction, there is zero net force. So there are no external forces actually acting on this coin. So by Newton's first law, this coin will remain at rest until there's another external force that acts upon it. Now, when we take this piece of paper away, the normal force disappears because it requires there to be a contact between the coin and the surface. So when there's no more contact, the normal force becomes zero. However, the coin is still subject to a downward weight force, which is no longer balanced by that upward normal force we saw earlier. So this coin is no longer at rest because it is acted upon by this external force, which is the weight force. Newton's second law can be simply characterized by an equation. It states that the net force acting on an object is equal to its mass multiplied by its acceleration. What Newton's second law states is that net forces acting on an object causes the object to undergo motion with acceleration. Recall that acceleration is the change in the object's velocity. This simple equation of m times by a tells us that a mass's acceleration is directly proportional to its net force, which means that greater the net force that acts upon the object, greater its acceleration. The mass's acceleration by the Newton's second law is also inversely proportional to its mass, which means if you have the same net force acting on two different objects, the object with a heavier mass will experience a smaller acceleration, and the object with a lighter mass will experience a greater acceleration. 
This also means when an object is acted upon by a constant net force, that is a net force that is not changing, it will undergo motion with constant acceleration. I discuss motion with constant acceleration in its own video in module one. Now, without further ado, let's go through a few examples of Newton's second law. So we have two boxes with masses 20 kilograms and 50 kilograms, both of which are acted upon by a 100 Newton force towards the right. What are the accelerations? Assuming the 100 Newton force is my net force, for the 20 kilogram mass, we have force is equal to ma. Its acceleration is equal to the force divided by its mass. So 100 Newtons divided by 20 kilograms, which is 5 meters per second squared to the right. Similarly, for the 50 kilogram mass, the acceleration is 100 newtons divided by 50 kilograms, which is 2 meters per second squared to the right. As you can see, the mass that is heavier, which is the 50 kilograms, has a smaller acceleration. What net force is required to cause a 15 kilogram mass to accelerate at 5 meters per second squared? So this is simply calculated by F equals ma. So we have the mass of the object multiplied by the required acceleration, which is 5 meters per second squared, and this is 75 newtons north. The direction of net force is always the same as the direction of the required acceleration. A person exerts a 20 newton force to the right, so 20 newton force towards the right, on the 5 kilogram mass. A 10 newton kinetic frictional force acts on the mass. So we have a 10 newton kinetic friction acting towards the left. What is the acceleration of the mass? So recall that Newton's second law states the net force is equal to the mass times by the acceleration. Before we can find the acceleration, we must calculate the net force acting on the object. The net force is equal to the 20 newtons to the right minus the 10 newtons towards the left. Then we divide this by 5 kilograms. So that's 10 divided by 5 which gives us 2 meters per second squared. This is the acceleration and the direction is the same as the net force, so towards the right. Newton's third law states that for every action force, there's an equal and opposite reaction force. Again, this statement can be very confusing when you first read it, so let's look through a few examples to understand it better. Let's say you have a person who exerts an 100 Newton action force onto a box towards the right. Newton's third law states that when this happens, the box also produces a reaction force of the same magnitude, which is 100 newtons, towards the left on that person. In the case where there are two people pulling on a rope, the person on the left is experiencing 100 newtons of action force due to the pulling action of the person on the right. And by Newton's third law, the person on the right will experience a reaction force of the same magnitude but in the opposite direction towards the left. A 75 kilogram person pushes a 50 kilogram box on a frictionless surface by exerting 150 Newton force. So the person exerts a 150 Newton force onto the 50 kilogram box which means the person also experiences 150 Newton force towards the left. That is the reaction force due to the box. So we have the reaction force, which is 150 Newtons to the left. We have the weight force of the person going down. And we also have the normal force that the surface exerts upwards because the person is standing on the surface. So we have the weight force, which is given by the mass of the person, so 75 kilograms, multiplied by 9.8. So this is 375 newtons downward. We also have the normal force, which is equal to the weight force in this case, and that's also 375 newtons upward. Now the normal force equals to the weight force in this case because in the vertical direction, the net force must be zero as the person is standing still on the surface. He is not moving upwards nor downward. A common misconception that students have is that they think the normal force is the reaction force to the weight force. And that is not true. The normal force being equal to the weight force is not due to Newton's third law. 
In fact, the normal force sometimes isn't equal to the weight force. We'll discuss this concept in more detail in forces on the inclined surface. Another reason why the normal force and the weight force are not action and reaction forces is because both the weight force and the normal force are acting on the same object, which is a person here. Remember that for Newton's third law to apply, the action and reaction force must apply to different objects, not the same object. Now, what about the acceleration of the person and the box? We said that by Newton's second law, the net force is equal to mass times by acceleration. For the person, the acceleration is equal to minus 150 newtons, because that's the reaction force he experiences, 150 newtons towards the left due to the box, divided by 75 kilograms, which is minus 2 meters per second squared. And this is simplified as 2 meters per second squared to the left. For the box, the acceleration is equal to 150 newtons, because that's the action force applied by the person to the right on the box, divided by its mass, which is 50 kilograms, and this is 3 meters per second squared to the right. So in this example, hopefully you can see that the action and reaction force, although they are equal in magnitude, they can produce accelerations of different magnitudes as well. In this case, the box, which has a slightly smaller mass of 50 kilograms, experiences a greater acceleration than the person. This concludes the video on Newtonian laws of motion.